I hope over the last few sessions you've begun to be amazed at the detailed accuracy of the Word of God and the way that God has revealed his heart to us and also his plans and his purposes for when God brings it all to an end. Because let's remind ourselves that when we're talking about end times, what we're talking about is that God is finally doing away with sin. He's ending the wrong and bringing in the end in order to restore everything to how he originally wanted it to be. And God is sharing his heart with us to help prepare us for that. Now, there's a lot that um, we don't understand and there's a lot that we're trying to interpret. And over the last few sessions, we've begun to see how Jesus was talking about false messiahs that would come and how he was drawing on um, some of the images that we see in Daniel. We see how Paul built on those as well when he shared about the man of lawlessness. And then John was talking about the Antichrists and the rising of an Antichrist, people who were opposed to Jesus. We then arrive at the book of Revelation. And as we seek to understand something more about this Antichrist, we come to uh, a, a dilemma. And there are, are two competing views that we see when we come to the book of Revelation for just where the Antichrist fits into the account of the end times. Let's first remind ourselves and put some things into context. When Daniel was prophesying, he was speaking in about 538 BC towards the end of the Babylonian rule and just before the Medes and Persians came to power. And he accurately prophesied what was going to happen over the next six centuries. We see that Jesus um, was speaking in the um, early 30 ADs. Uh, and he was bringing in this passage in, in Matthew 24 that we've been studying. We see Paul was speaking in AD 51 when he was talking to the church in Thessalonia. And when John then gets his revelation, this is when he's on the island of Patmos, which has been put around AD 95. What we are being told is, is prophetic. It's looking forward to what will take place after the church age and after the age that we're currently in. And this is where God wants us to understand something of what uh, lies ahead in order that our faith in him might be strong, but also that our witness for him might become more real. I said that in the book of Revelation, we see two possibilities for where the Antichrist fits into this account of the end times. And today we're going to look at the first one of those. In Revelation 6, we come to the beginning of the tribulation. Now, we've looked at the tribulation. We've looked at how Daniel prophesied that that would last for seven years. And we've reflected on some of the, the details of that. But at the beginning of uh, Revelation chapter 6, we see that Jesus, who is the Lamb, he breaks open the seal. And the seal is, for want of a better term, it, it's the price tag. And it often talks about property rights. And what we have here is a picture of the Lamb breaking open the seals, breaking open what's holding back the title deeds to what lies ahead. The first of the uh, theories about the uh, Antichrist in the end times is that what we read in Revelation 6 and at the beginning of Revelation 6 is one possibility for the Antichrist. Remember that we read in 2 Thessalonians 2 that um, the man of lawlessness was being held back by the, until the appointed time and that there was something or someone that was holding him back. And in Daniel chapter 8, we read that, um, that the, the Antichrist was being held back until sin was at its height. What we see in Revelation 6 is Jesus breaking open the seal that holds back the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, that might be something that you've heard of in Hollywood films, but actually it's something which is rooted in the Bible. But in Revelation 6, we see the four horsemen of the apocalypse riding out once Jesus breaks open the seals and removes the restraint. And this is one of the reasons why 
Some people would look at this passage and say this is a picture of the Antichrist. What we see is that these four horsemen ride out and the first horseman is riding a white horse. And that white horse is symbolic of a king, a ruler. Remember the images of kings riding in triumph. And we have a picture here of a ruler. And all that we've learned about the Antichrist is that he comes as a ruler, he comes with power. But we also see that he's carrying a bow. There's no mention of arrows. And so some people draw from that that this is um, a, a warrior who's coming, but he's achieving victory through peace and agreement without having to fire a shot. And again, remember what we read about the Antichrist coming with deception and being able to um, achieve things through his persuasion. This rider on the white horse, he also is wearing a crown. And again, the crown is a symbol of permission. It's a symbol of authority. And remember that we, we read that the, uh, the Antichrist was coming to fulfill purposes. He was giving a, um, power and power to deceive, power and authority. And what we also see is that he comes to win battles and victory. Remember what we've read through Daniel and through um, Paul's writings and through what Jesus said in Matthew 24, that there will be this period of destruction. And what we have as the four horsemen ride out is we have a series of events. First of all, the, the rider on the white horse rides out. And remember that some people view that this is the Antichrist. And he's at the head of his charge because following from this, this sense of power, we see a rider on a red horse, and the red horse is representative and brings war and slaughter. Following that, we have a black horse, which is bringing famine, followed by a green horse or pale horse, which is bringing disease and death off the back of famine. What we see Jesus prophesying in Matthew 24, what we see Daniel sharing in Daniel 8, 7, 8 and 9, what we see Paul speaking about in 2 Thessalonians, Wars, famines, earthquakes, great rebellions, bringing destruction. All of these things we see fulfilled as the white rider rides out on the horse. And if we follow it through, we then see that there are, there's a fifth seal that's broken where people are martyred for their faith. And remember that Jesus spoke in Matthew 24 about the persecution of the believers, of the, of the people of God. Followed by a sixth seal, which brings earthquakes, the moon turning red, stars falling. And again, come back to the images of Matthew 24. And following this, the people flee to the mountains. And again, come back to Matthew 24 and the images we see. So the first possibility we have for the Antichrist, fulfilling all of this prophecy, is seen in Matthew chapter 6. And Matthew chapter 6 and the, what we read in the tribulation and what we read in, uh, in the next few chapters follows incredibly the detail of what we see in Daniel, um, what we see from Paul's uh, sharings. The challenge for us is to take this on board and we can question and marvel and wonder about the identity of the riders on the horses. But let's recognise that what we're seeing is sin being fulfilled. When sin is allowed to run its course and reach its pinnacle and reach its height, we see the world experiencing the full effects of sin. War, destruction, famine, disease, death. A really cheerful picture for us to finish with. But remember, throughout all of this, God remains in control but has a plan and a purpose that ultimately his glory and his um, salvation will be seen.